Now, I've been living with this 2024 Range Rover Evoque over the past week, and it's definitely been a blast and a fun little car to drive around. Of course, as we all know, the Evoque is the urban Range Rover. It's meant for smaller city, suburban environments, and, and it, while it does actually have some impressive off-road capability, its real prime and focus is on on-road comfort, style, looks, presence and for 2024 all of that has kind of been enhanced just in little bits of ways just like the 2024 Velar has its bigger brother we have a slightly redesigned headlight design a slightly cleaner facial we have new colors a little bit of an improved interior look though the overall lineup has been reduced itself we have fewer trim options fewer engine options and the pricing has pretty much around stayed the same or gone up a little bit. This one is coming in at over $60,000 as configured. So is the Range Rover Evoque still competitive in this market or is its brand identity, its incredibly good looks and just general overall chic and style keeping it going in this modern day competitive SUV segment? We're going to find that out in this video as well as take a full tour and review of this facelifted 2024 Evoque. Let's go dive in. Well, guys, for the 2024 model year, we only actually have one powertrain on the Range Rovers now, and it's the P250 powertrain. Gone is around P300 powertrain, which got us almost 300 horsepower. Now we're only dealing with around 246 horsepower and 269 pound-feet of torque from this P250 powertrain. And that is consisting of a 2-liter turbocharged engine. It's paired to a 9-speed ZF automatic gearbox sent through all four wheels through Land Rover's fantastic um, all-wheel drive system. It's primarily a front-wheel drive based system in this particular vehicle in the Evoque as it is a transverse front-wheel drive based platform though the chassis of the Evoque is really fantastic. It's using a mix of steel, aluminum, and magnesium so it's a nice premium chassis and this is going to be a nice thing to kind of set itself apart from some other competitors such as a Cadillac XT4 or some other of um, some other competitors that don't use um, higher end materials in their platform. So that's something you can note here. Um, this is a pretty good engine. It's a lot better than the earlier Evoque powertrains, especially the previous um, generation of the Evoque. Um, those had a little bit of some raspy engines, but it is a little bit unfortunate that we don't get the plug-in hybrid powertrains or the more advanced mild hybrid powertrains that the European and other markets are getting for the Evoque. I think it would have been a nice lineup here in the US, though we are just, I guess, stuck with this one powertrain now, which is fine, but zero to 60 in around seven-ish seconds, 20 MPG city, around 22-ish MPG combined, and around 27 MPG on the highway really isn't super impressive for a vehicle this size and for something in this class. I wish they could have thrown in like a advanced mild hybrid system or something in here that kind of would have impeded a lot of that but alas this is our only option here in the u.s and it's a fine powertrain now like i said also we have um land rover and i guess range rovers really advanced all-wheel drive systems here and we also come with their terrain response two system with a, an incredibly long host of different um drive modes and kind of things to get you out of some sticky situations. And this is kind of where it really sets itself apart from its competitors as it really can do some off-road stuff with over eight inches of ground clearance, which is really impressive. And if you kind of throw some proper um, tires on here and some maybe smaller wheels, you could get a little bit more performance in that off-road setting if you dare to choose to take your urban Range Rover in an off-road environment. But alas, you actually do have some pretty good approach and departure angles, which I guess kind of makes this thing a little bit of a peppy little um, suburban urban off-roader. Okay guys, so here we are with the 2024 Range Rover Evoque here in the Dynamic SE trim. And like I mentioned earlier, this is like pretty much the top spec trim you can get on the Evoque now. And I think it looks absolutely gorgeous in this new Tribeca blue paint color. So what's new up front? Well, up front here, we have the same kind of new facial that we saw on the facelifted Velar, the larger sibling to the Range Rover Evoque. And that's really just going to be a slimmer, more streamlined or reduced, and I would almost say minimalist style grill. We also have new um, Pixel LED headlights on this particular Evoque. These are the upgraded headlight design here. And I think they look obviously very similar, but I think it's a little bit more streamlined, a little bit more premium and modern than they did before. You can see we have our signature daytime running light elements at the lower end, and inside you can see those um, new um, LED elements. I believe in Europe they are kind of able to do that adaptive style technology, but in the US, I don't believe that's enabled just yet, where it's kind of able to just shut some of the pixels off so it doesn't blind everyone else on the road. And I do really like this new color, the Tribeca blue. It's kind of following that new grayish blue theme we see on, on every new automaker these days. Front here on the fake little side vents here, kind of with these little side strakes. I th actually think it looks really gorgeous. Um, you can also get this in complete black if you do choose to do so. You can also see down here, we have some kind of fog and turning style lights blended into the bumper. Very 
very sleek, very well integrated. Also on this dynamic SE model, we can see on the hood, we get these little bit of those fake vents accents here. This is not actually on the standard Range Rover Evoque, which is one thing to note. And I do think it looks quite nice. That Corinthian bronze accent also carries over to the side of the Evoque here and these little side streaks that blend into the door panel. And of course on this, um, uh, facelifted evoke we do get these retractable door handles here that we find on the bigger range rover models and you can see right now they are completely open pretty cool operation here they actually were, haven't had no issues with these and you do just press this button to lock and unlock them you can see they retract and pretty simple to unlock them as well and i think they are designed to actually break through any ice that's going to form on top of them which is a really nice function up top here we have a absolutely massive panoramic glass roof which it looks nice with this blacked out roof um, in the center and we also have this corinthian bronze style roof option up here as you can see it also blends into the top rear spoiler i think this is a really nice contrasting touch here i'm a little bit different than all the black roofs we're seeing this day you can get a black roof option on this range over evoke but i actually do really appreciate that they didn't give me that because it stands out just a little bit more it's something different and i always love their shark fin style um rear antenna arrays up here you also see a camera integrated into there as part of your camera system as well as your um digital rear view mirror as well which is this one does have as part of a package now coming out to the rear of the evoke again very sl minor changes that have been done here for the 2024 model year very nice very clean as well i do really like these very slim taillights we have on the evoke they blend very nicely into the body they're really long on the sides here it really does make a nice presence and they, do, and they do do a little bit of an animation when you unlock the vehicle which i do like one thing to note back here is that you're actually no longer going to find the Land Rover badge. There's actually no Land Rover badge on the back of, I think, any new Range Rover now these days. You're really only going to find it on the grill and throughout some of the interior stuff. So they're really kind of trying to make Range Rover, it's a little bit more its own thing within the Land Rover company, as well as the Defender nameplate and the Discovery nameplate are kind of going to be their own like sub brands underneath Land Rover. Now, one of the areas that unfortunately the Evoque just isn't its best at is in cargo space as well as interior passenger space. It's a small vehicle even compared with its competition, but it is very strong on style as we all know. But let's go check out that rear cargo space now so we can open it with the key fob here power rear, ta rear tailgate as we should always have and i do actually happen to have some cargo back here it's a little bit messy apologies but you can kind of get a little bit of a sense of the space we are dealing with back here i have about two bags and some stuff just lying around back here at jackets and stuff and you can see it basically takes up almost the entire trunk space and you don't actually have any underfloor trunk space back here you do thankfully though have a spare tire which is nice i guess if in some conditions where you need a spare tire it's nice to have rather than run flats or a tire inflator but you can see the space definitely is not big at all thankfully you do have um 40 20 40 style um folding rear seats to kind of increase this cargo space a little bit you can also remove this cargo cover with these little hooks right here if you do need a little bit more um uh, height as well in your cargo area led lights back here we do have a power socket if you do need that which is nice some tie down points if you do need those as well um, not too bad but again just general space back here is definitely on the tighter side and by not having any kind of like underfloor storage you're definitely losing out on even more space back here um, thankfully of course it is power you can also use these little um, hooks here to kind of pull it down but if you want some more space you're going to want to upgrade to a larger range rover or a competitor let's go take a tour of the rear seats now of the evoke and we're gonna have to open the doors once again so we can just press this little button and the door handles pop out for us nice and easy like that pretty nice operation there's also a really nice solid sounding door thunk listen to that really like that clunk there pretty easy to open too i really have had no issues with those um power door handles here now what i do have an issue with is though is the space on the evoke it is a tiny little vehicle let me just tell you that and i'm also a little bit disappointed on the materials found in this interior on this door panel here it's pretty much all kind of like this rubberized um plastic style material even down here this almost feels like a vinyl style material in here which i would expect to be a leather for around over sixty thousand dollars for this particular one down here is like this soft touch plastic material thankfully you do have a space for like a large water bottle and a little bit of a, some storage up here but it's not real storage it's it's kind of completely open so it's more of a little bit of a door handle we have a very tiny little um speaker here for our meridian sound system and we also have i believe um auto up and down windows and a nice little door pole and the general design of the door is nice but i wish the materials were a little bit nicer for this price point okay guys getting inside like i said 
pretty easy. You have a pretty nice wide door opening space, but it is very tight back here. I will say myself, this is my driving position. I am six feet tall and I honestly do fit behind myself pretty well. You have nice big deep cutouts in the back of the seats. So um, a person can fit back here. Um, some storage cubbies back here on both of the seats which is nice and foot space is honestly pretty good since the seats are up so high for the driver and front passenger so i do like that um, but i would say it is feeling a little bit tight back here especially when i close the door this particular one does have heated rear seats which is nice though we don't have our own climate system which i do believe is part of an option this vehicle does not have um i think that kind of splits the climate front and rear which is nice otherwise you do have a little bit of a hump back here so you can kind of fit three people i would say back here let's see yeah honestly it's not the worst thing it's just if these um front seats were too far back you might have a little bit of some tough time putting your knees there if you're on the taller side and if you do have three people back here it's definitely going to be a little bit cramped because I don't really have a place to kind of put my legs and then they're going to be super super cramped thankfully though these rear seats I do find pretty comfortable actually they are the nice same comfortable leather that we're going to find on the front um, again like they are heated we have some isofix anchor points for our car seats there and I believe the center console does fold down for us where we get two little cup holders which is a nice little touch um, we do have this panoramic glass roof which does thankfully extend all the way to the back here you can see the shade is not fully closed right now there is a big bar in the center but you do have this nice big glass portion back here which does help to open up interior space a little bit and kind of make it feel a little more roomy and thankfully they designed this panoramic roof in a way where it does not really impede on headroom as you can see here it's pushed really far out to the end of the sides of the vehicle so your head space really is not really too compromised so i can sit fully back fully don't have an issue too much i have I say like this much of headroom and I don't really have an issue moving side to side in some vehicles that have these big panoramic roofs moving side to side is a little bit of an issue and I kind of get like stuck on my head there which I just did experience in the Cadillac XT4 a competitor to this Evoque. open up the door and again the same treatment on these door panels as we saw in the rear so really nothing to kind of go over here again I wish there were some nicer materials around here we just have of course more buttons for more controls on this interior memory seats as well I do like this illuminated Range Rover side sill plate and aluminum which is really nice this one does not have all weather floor mats and as you can see they do get very dirty from this regular carpet um we do have a lot of controls for our seats over here, lumbar support and a whole bunch of power directional ways, which is nice. And let's hop inside now. Shutting up the door. Nice, easy operation. Now we are inside of the 2024 Range Rover Evoque. Turning on the Evoque is pretty easy. We just press this stop start button right here and it comes to life awesome so what's new on the interior of the 2024 evoke well we have a few new things in here actually um new steering wheel design which is nice we also have a new touchscreen display and no more buttons <laughs> like anywhere all the buttons are pretty much gone on the 2024 evoke so let's start off with this new steering wheel design here um this is kind of like range rover's newer steering wheel just layout and design that they're kind of working with now going forward and it does change things up a little bit we kind of had those vertical kind of stalks on the sides now it's kind of more traditional style on our left hand side here we have our controls that are really going to just operate this digital cluster up here and we have our cruise control and safety systems buttons over here with as well as a heated stereo button which is nice and i do like how all these buttons illuminate thankfully it's not a haptic touch panel these are actual buttons that you can kind of see they will depress when i do press them which is nice so you kind of get some feedback going on there and these actually change depending on what screen you're on so let's say if i press this button here you can kind of see the buttons are going to change their operation here in coordinates to what's happening on this display up there which is kind of cool we do have these actually really fantastic paddle shifters on this dynamic se model which are a lot bigger than they look let me see if i can kind of can show you this they're pretty huge paddle shifters and they are metal i don't know if you guys can hear that yes metal paddle shifters Really nice operation to them. So I'm really happy they did put that on those. And then comes the minimalist interior. Well, Range Rover doesn't really like to use um, the word minimalist. I kind of like to say a reduction in elegance and luxury in that kind of sense, but it's, it's, it's a minimalist style of interior. All those buttons are gone here. We used to have a climate panel here, which is a touchscreen panel, that's gone. Everything is now baked into this curved um, infotainment system here. And I have to say, and it's right, it is a fantastic infotainment system. It's really quick um, generally to use. It's very fluid. I do like all the um, inputs are very easy to kind of navigate generally. But my issue is that there's just so much going on in this display. 
it's just a little bit too much going on there. I kind of wish they had a separate panel down here. Instead of the climate panel now, we have this um, open pour wood trim going across this entire, entire center console, which again, feels very nice to the touch. We now do have a wireless charging mat back here, a little bit of some extra storage as well as a USB-C port, which is nice. Um, but again, I think I would rather have a separate climate screen instead. And this shifter just feels so lonely <laughs> back here. Um, you can put it into drive, obviously. You have a sport mode for the transmission, reverse, neutral, which is a little bit difficult to get into sometimes. There we go. And our parking button, which is also actually our emergency brake button, um, if you are holding down the brake and hold it long enough, which is interesting. Because when you press it, kind of just in park, it will say, um, hold foot to release parking brake. So now my parking brake is off, but we're, you can see we're still in park. So that's really interesting how they blended that into one button there. Two cup holders here, which you can actually cover with these split center consoles here. So if the driver wants a longer armrest, the driver can, or if the passenger wants a two, they can do that. If you need the cup holders, you can move these back and kind of get more space there. So that's a cool little touch here. We also have a nice center console here. It's pretty deep and we do have a USB-C port in there, which is really nice. And quality in here is generally pretty good, though it's a little bit on the um, flimsier side, a little bit hollow areas like over here. This just doesn't feel like, everything's generally put together well, but it just doesn't feel as substantial as something like a BMW may feel like an X1. So that's one thing to note on this interior. Um, again, same issue I have with the materials in here. This is over $60,000 and this is a injection molded plastic dashboard. And this is definitely not, I'm pretty sure it's not leather up here. It does not feel like leather. Okay guys, so let's say you're driving along here and you wanna change your climate systems, for example. You just press this button here and you open this little panel that opens up for you. You have your heated seat controls here and you can change your climate temperatures really quickly and change your fan speed pretty quickly, right? And this panel closes up right there. Say you want to change the temperature on a fly, right? This is actually pretty simple to do. So all you have to do is just do this. And one thing to note here is, as you can see, it goes straight to high and I go all the way down here, it goes to 69, but you can actually keep going further down and further down until it gets to low. So that's one interesting to note here. You can't just hold it up here and hold it till it goes to a higher temperature if you're doing this quick option here. You kind of have to just keep scrolling like a mouse almost to get to these different temperatures, which honestly is a little bit concerning sometimes. Otherwise you're gonna have to open up this whole panel and just click high or low. but. With this quick touch panel, it's a little bit interesting with slider to use. You definitely get used to it over time, and it definitely helps that the screen is curved. It feels very natural to kind of just scroll on that, but it's one weird thing that I have noticed um, over this week. Now, another weird thing is that your drive mode selector is also on this side panel here, and you can do the same motion. So it, sometimes you might get confused touching either one. You can open each panel to kind of open these larger displays here. Um, you have like auto brake hold, auto stop start, and now stability control, hill descent control, driver assistance, all that stuff can be found in this panel. Or you could do what I just did with the climate systems here is I could just slide dynamic, comfort, eco, auto, off-road modes, and that'll bring you to the additional off-road mode page. Or you can just quickly kind of scroll through these different modes, which is like that function. So that's kind of easy to use. I think you learn it over time. But one thing I really just can't stand is that they put the volume slider on the passenger side. So it's, let's say I'm driving over here and yes, I can just change the volume with this button. But if I want to touch the screen, I have to now reach all the way over here and I can change the volume like this. And it, the same issue happens here. We kind of have to keep scrolling up and up and up to turn it on. You can mute it, unmute it like that, or you can open up the panel here and kind of access more buttons and things to kind of further tune your volume here. But it's just a little bit of unnecessary things. A simple volume knob here or something would be a lot easier to do. And if, yes, you have this slider here, but you know, all the stuff baked into the touchscreen does get a little bit cluttered sometimes. Now you have your home screen style display here, so you can kind of have these different tiles you can slide through and they're all customizable. Um, you can change them, remove them, do whatever you want with these different sliders. And they all correspond to the apps that you're gonna have in this app drawer here. And um, you can see all these different apps can be those little big tiles that you have on there. Um, since this one is a dynamic model, you do have a dynamic screen here. We can kind of control all of your different settings here. So we have, um, can change the engine settings, steering settings, gear shift settings as well as the um, adaptive suspension settings in there which is really nice a stopwatch lap times and g meter which you're really never going to need in an evoke that only has around 240 ish horsepower um, so that's interesting to note there some other interesting things on this you do have our off-road style page here so this is going to show your vehicle dimensions if you've ever needed that but you can always go to your off-road pages which i guess 
someone put over here right now. And you can see all the different fun stuff in here. So we can see what's happening with the all-wheel drive system. We can see our altitude. We have our access to our auto stop start, hill descent control. Um, we have some terrain response modes that we can quickly access in here. We also have wade sensing here. So yes, you can actually go into some water with this Range Rover Vogue. Maybe not be as deep as some other um, Range Rovers, but this is pretty impressive actually for our range water. It says do not wait in flowing water, um, which is kind of cool. And there's actually sensors underneath the mirrors that are kind of measuring how deep the water is. So when you, if you are going in water, you actually see like little waves going off here, which is pretty cool. And generally, I think it's a fine infotainment system. It's just some things are just too baked into here to kind of go through all the time. And it gets a little bit cluttered and a little bit annoying, though it's easily solvable by having a um, additional panel here to kind of access climate stuff, for example. But nonetheless, enough with the complaints here. I think it's going to be time to go take this Evoke on a drive because it is a fantastic little urban Range Rover vehicle. And I think it is still a good vehicle to drive around on a daily basis. So let's go find that out now. Very clear cameras. We have a 360 degree view camera system as well, which is really fantastic. Really love the animations on here. Off-road cameras as well as, you know, it is a Range Rover product. And of course we have parking sensors, trajectory, and some fun stuff where it can kind of project um, whatever the front is ground is in front of you on here once you start moving a little bit which is really cool and i just actually found out if you press this button here it'll actually upload a new display on your heads-up display i'm not sure if you can see it on camera here which also shows the wheel movement as well as i think different angles you're kind of going on which is really fun and turn it off by pressing that button there so now as we can see here we actually have um a few different gauge cluster themes we can kind of cycle through which is really fun right now we have this kind of center style theme here we can change what's happening on either side of these clusters if we wanted to or we can just kind of change it to this more traditional style display and changing this interior portion we have a full map display and right now it's actually displaying apple maps instead of the inbuilt navigation system because i have my phone connected via wireless apple carplay over here you can see my phones and this wireless charger i'm just going to put this over here right now because it gets a little bit toasty in there we also have a kind of cleaner display as well as a um, driver assistance display as well. So really nice configurable gauge clusters. Now, I will say we have pretty tall gears on the Evoque. And, you know, this is a transmission and engine that is tuned for fuel economy. Now, I'm going to pop it into dynamic mode here. You see you can just swipe to do that pretty easily. We have all of our... Um, settings on we're gonna hop out onto the highway here just to see a little bit of some handling and acceleration definitely feels happier off the line we can pop the transmission and sport as well play with the gears And I have to say, this is where the Evoke actually surprised me. Um, and it's just general chassis dynamics. You can see it's recommending me to go to higher gears here uh, for fuel efficiency. But it's this sporty side of the Evoke that I really was not expecting like whatsoever. Um, you know, I, I'm going into a Range Rover Land Rover product and I'm going straight into thinking off-road, it's gonna be high off the ground feeling. You're gonna feel a little bit more of that luxurious kind of experience here but no it, it has that experience but it has a little bit of a dynamic sporty side to it i really think they've kind of drawn that out from their learnings from their sv division as well as from the jaguar line of products which are definitely a little bit more of car like and sportier on that side so pretty impressed with that and acceleration for this engine's pretty good you know it kind of runs out of breath going up into the higher speed levels over here. But generally, I think it's more than enough. We have uh, out here on the highway, very good chassis dynamics. The suspension in comfort mode now, we just switched it back to comfort mode. Very smooth over um, just general pavement and bumps. It's pretty quiet on this interior, though I will note there is a wind whistle coming from like this corner up here, or maybe from the mirror. It is kind of faint whistling in my ear sometimes. So that's one thing I did notice. Um, even with the window completely closed, I've tried opening and closing it a few times and it just is a little bit persistent. But generally on the highway, it's very comfortable. And I just actually got out of driving a Volvo XC60, a little bit of a bigger vehicle compared to this one. And the ride in that was just so unnecessarily stiff. This actually felt very welcome. The only issue I would say where this Evoke kind of falls apart just a little bit is I think with these larger 20 inch wheels and over some just broken uneven pavement, you really do feel those um, jitters and bumps into the cabin a little bit too much, I think for me. And especially when you put it in the, the dynamic mode, because that stiffens up those dampers a little bit and you kind of get a lot of that stuff is more translated into the cabin though generally in the comfort setting and 
pretty much all conditions, it's actually quite comfortable and smooth around um, just day-to-day -day driving, which I do quite like a lot. Now, as we are out here on the highway, I do have to test for you guys the kind of cruise control and safety systems that we have on this Evoque. So I'm gonna change our display over to our adaptive safety systems display and it really doesn't have anything too advanced on this system so as you can see here on the steering wheel it is a green lit up little lane line marker and that's just really your kind of lane um, departure assist here i say lane departure assist because it doesn't really have a lane keep assist function it just doesn't really kind of keep you centered in the lanes it kind of pogos you sticks you in and out of the lanes and sometimes it really just gives you a warning a little bit of a nudge so it's I wouldn't really put too much confidence in that part of the system. Um, you can turn that off by holding the button here and it will deactivate or you can turn it back on quickly with one press, which is nice. Turning on your adaptive cruise, you just press this button twice actually and you can just set it to your uh, desired speed. You can change your distance control pretty easily. So, and, and it just kind of goes about its way on the highway. Um, obviously you have to have your hands on the wheel at all times for this particular uh, model. There's no kind of eye tracking or any kind of hands-free style system in this Range Rover Evoque whatsoever. Um, I didn't even find that in an option actually. So this one's pretty much fully loaded, save for I think a ambient lighting and rear climate package. Um, so that would be something I would like to see down the road they could probably offer because a lot of competitors are offering pretty advanced um, cruise control and kind of full steering assist style systems. And this one not having it at over $60,000 in 2024 is a little bit disappointing on my personal part. Also have a digital rear view mirror here, which does work pretty nice. Um, it's very limited actually in its adjustability. You can only go up and down and change the brightness and some other digital rear view mirrors, you can kind of change the zoom angle. You can go left and right. I'm not sure why this isn't so customizable because I actually, I think actually the camera for this is on the roof and not in the rear glass actually. So that may be the reasoning for that. Um, very clear and it works very well. It's one of my favorite actually just resolution wise systems. I actually like the mounting on the roof. I think it gives you a better view than having something mounted into like the rear trunk or something. But um, I wish there was a little bit more customizability to that because not everyone's going to have just an up and down position they want to adjust to. And then popping it back into dynamic mode, you can kind of change your whole experience of the Evoque pretty quickly. You can pop into the sport mode for the gearbox, go down a few gears of this ZF sourced gearbox here. And I have to say the gear shifts themselves are actually very quick. And they sound pretty sporty. But the, at the end of the day though, still this gearbox is tuned for comfort. Uh, anyways guys, I generally have been having a very positive experience with the Evoque for this past week. Though you do have to remember that this is a smaller vehicle than pretty much all of the competition here. And at this higher price point, you really are paying for the looks, the Range Rover brand experience, and that just, um, general overall feel you're going to be getting driving a Range Rover. You have that really high driving experience, which I honestly do like with that kind of smaller hatchback style body shape. But if you are valuing something that's going to have a little bit more fuel, fuel economy, better general storage and interior space, you're definitely going to want to either upgrade to something like a Velar if you're able to kind of do so or go with something from the competition. Otherwise, I think this is a pretty good update for 2024. I do love the technology that we have in here. I don't like some of the choices they made with the technology by kind of removing some of the features in here. But generally, I think it's a pretty good comprehensive update. Otherwise, I'd like to see a little bit more fuel economy, like I mentioned. I want to see some more engine lineups brought back and a little bit more options and features that they kind of took away for this model year. Anyways, guys, thank you for joining me on yet another POV drive and review with All Car News. And as always, stay tuned for more coming soon. Cheers.